I started making art because I found myself skipping school and all my classes when I was first in college and just going around taking pictures all the time. So I decided that it was time for me to leave college and go to workshops and really learn how to be a photographer and see if that would work out for me. And luckily it did. I went to a bunch of workshops and actually became a medical photographer for a while. And then I went back to college at NYU when we moved to New York and then became a teacher and just started working on my own work. And it's just been a very nice ride ever since then. I've really enjoyed what I've been doing with my life in art. This was my great-grandfather's and grandfather's store in Frankfurt, Germany. It was called the House of Gifts, but they were known really for electronics and they sold cameras. As soon as any kind of electronics were invented, they had it in the store. The Lights family are the ones that had Leica cameras and they helped my family get out of Nazi Germany by enabling them to open up a store when they came here. They had gotten their visas, but everything was taken away from them. So the Lights family wrote letters of introduction for them, and they were able to open up a camera store. So the cameras have been in my family forever, since 1874. It's always been a part of my family life. And in fact, here's a picture of me as a little kid, and you can see the camera on the chair. I never really thought of it as being my way of making a living or this is what I should do until I realized that it's what I should do. This is my dark room, which is in the basement. And what you're looking at right now is really where I do the digital dark room work. The cyanotypes or cyanotypes I made with a group of people when I went to uh, the West Bank and we did a cyanotype project with Israelis and Palestinians. And it was so interesting because they all get along just fine and we had a fantastic time. And then the rest of the office is just my books. And those are the three books that I've done, which I was pretty excited about. Uh, How to on all things alternative processes. I've never had such a large space before. I've got this huge room in the basement when we moved to the Hudson Valley from New York City. So the, all of the cyanotypes are covering. That's my scanner. It covers my printer. But now we're about to walk into the favorite room in my house, which is my dark room. I've never had such a large dark room before, and it's just terrific. The white sink was given to me by a friend, and then the gray sink was what my sink was. That was the size of my dark room when I lived in the city. So now I can have both enlargers out and I have plenty of space to put all of my chemicals. Those last prints you're looking at are my newest project. So the gray sink is now used for when I teach, I have to have everything broken up by chemicals that are needed for each different process. And then I work in the white sink. That's my UV box. So as I'm working with uh, different projects, I get a little bit sloppy and leave things out. As you can see, everything is out on the desks, but I know where everything is. And it's just a very nice place to be working for me. I've now been working since 2005 on wet plate collodion images. For wet plate collodion, you have to have your darkroom with you because you can't have the glass or anything on it dry before you can expose it. So it has to be wet from start to finish. So I have to bring my darkroom with me when I'm in the field. When I learned how to do the wet plate collodion technique, I was thinking about what kinds of images I should do with it. And so at the time, it was, you know, right when things were getting pretty bad about how many immigrants should be let into the country, and it was getting a little bit crazy. And so I thought, what better way to really show 
what this country is made up of were made up of immigrants. And so I started photographing them. And then as I was photographing, I decided, well, what am I going to do with it? And luckily, I was able to get this show at Ellis Island. With the show, they asked me if I could fill six galleries. And in order to fix six, you know, fill up six galleries, I didn't want it to just be images on a wall. And they want to have a very large educational component to whatever shows they have. And so being up here, I thought about the glass house and it can come apart. So the glass house was in one room. The images were in another couple of rooms. I had posters filling up one wall. I had my actual amber types in glass cases. And so I can explain to people how these images were done. And then when I was trying to figure out how to actually get to be able to do the glass house and having it really tell a story, I had a couple of friends uh, look at the work and they were discussing with me and we decided how about if we do it so that it is pictures of Ellis Island as you enter and exit the glass house and then the images of the immigrants along the side. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones because we're all immigrants. What I did was I scanned in all of those images and then I made, it's called a water slide decal and actually put the images, transferred them onto the glass. The house comes apart and so it travels. I can't say it easily travels, but it travels. When I first started photographing, I did use infrared film and then I started hand painting infrared film changes the makeup of the tonal range of the film because it's sensitive to infrared light. And I really loved it because it was more ethereal than regular black and white film. And I've always wanted to shoot having it be more dreamlike than just taking what's right in front of me. I like to be able to come up with the colors that make me feel the way an image might make me feel more dreamlike than reality. My favorite room is my dark room. I love working with glass. I love working with the wet plate collodion. But out of that, the tools have to be either my portable dark room or my dark room. Well, I think it's really important to just keep at it and to keep working. And also you have to make sure that it is a strong enough feeling for you. When I was in school, I had one teacher that said, I don't know why you're in photography school. You're in the wrong place. Go do something else. And you just have to be persistent and decide that this is what you're going to do and what you're going to be. And keep at it and also keep educating yourself. I do feel like a lot of times I'm working in a vacuum because I don't like to have people around while I'm thinking about things or while I am trying to work. I like to, you know, be in my own head and be by myself. But when I'm done, I like to get feedback. And I think that's really important. You have to sort of get out of your vacuum and out of your head and make sure that you get feedback from people. Don't let anyone discourage you. If you feel like this is what you want to do, that's what you do. This program is made possible in part through the support of New York State Council on the Arts, Orange County Government, Shapiro's Furniture, and from donations from people like you. Please consider making a donation today at www.ocartscouncil.org. Thank you.